flees below the elbow. That was the law. I mean, if you didn't, one of the mothers would come and say, you got a problem. <laughs> and, you know, head sleeves up above here, because they could be right here. And, uh, you know, you just, you didn't dare talk back to the mother, much less, of course, folks talk back to everybody. Now, but, <laughs> but you didn't dare talk back to one of the mothers of the church, you know. No, you just didn't do that. And uh, so you would make whatever excuse you had. They said, well, get some sleeves up down. And so you would see in some churches, you would see if they bought the dress with sleeves up here, they would put lace, they'd sew lace on it so it would come down below the elbow. <laughs> I, anybody, anybody know anything about that kind of stuff? I don't think anybody knows about it. You do. I know how to knock the crowd. It was more than the sleeves. They had to call out to your neck. Yeah. Your yeah. And your skirt long. Yeah. Uh, seven inches above the, and right. at least seven inches above the ground. I mean, not at least, but no more than seven inches above the ground. Yeah. You know, so those were like laws. I mean, they were really, really laws. And uh, there were some other things, a lot of stuff, you know. Yes, yes, yes. That, but that was, that was later. But then up until way, way back, like when I was a teenager, so we're talking now, 70 years ago. Your dad didn't. <laughs> Pardon me? Your dad didn't. No. <laughs> Those are just things you saw in the churches. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But it spills over. It spills over to other churches, and they thought, you know, because we, we had, in, in one of the churches I was in, my first husband lived back in Ohio. A lady came to the church and she looked at us and uh, and she kept looking, you know, looking at her feet. And she said, well, you know, I went, uh, the name of the church, I went over to so-and-so church and I looked in there and I saw the little ladies with them toes out. I said, I know I'm in the wrong church. <laughs> so she came over to the church. Oh, Lord, it was so sad, you know. But anyhow, my point is, I won't take a lot of time on that, but the point is, but there's no law other than the law of God. Yeah. And the law, of course, does ask us, and as I say, it's for men and women both, everybody should dress modestly. Mm -hmm. But uh, I tell our ladies, you know, when, when, uh, I see a lot of us don't wear no sleeves, but I just say, make sure that if you have no sleeves, make sure that they, you know, up high they come up. I think you understand what I'm, what I'm saying. That's what it is. But, um, and, and men need to be sure that they do not expose also. And, uh, but my point is simply, we don't have a law in our church. Like, we don't have laws. What we have is we just, the word. Everybody just do modest and be temperate. And that goes for jewelry and everything else. You can, you can be intemperate in everything you wear. You can wear outlandish jewels or too much makeup, you know, or anybody. You can be intemperate in what you do. So, but you do it not because there's a law in the church. You do it because God ordered you to do it. Of course, we have scriptures for that, particularly in Peter. And he tells you, you know, it's not the wearing of gold or the you know, mirror place of heart that you know, supposed to, people are supposed to be attracted to. It's not you. They shouldn't be attracted necessarily to the outward appearance of you, but it's the heart that people want to be attracted to. So that's what God is calling for. However, the people of Israel, they had uh, at least 216 laws that they made out of the laws that God had already given, which is the ten commandments. Now, how do you think that you're going to have 216 laws from those laws? But they did. They managed to do that. And some of our people do just about the same. They do this, the law for this, the law for that, the law for that. And if you do this, they're looking at you, you know, upside down. <laughs> Ooh, dear. But anyhow, the people, they try to follow the law, but to make themselves right with God. But they didn't succeed because they tried to make themselves right by the things they did. You're not 
not right because of what you do. You're right because of what God does through you. That's, that's what makes you right. Because of what Christ does through and in you. Excuse me. Almost, someone's talking to me about communion. And I just realized that I hadn't gotten over to the church. Why do we take communion? Somebody didn't quite understand what you take communion. And they thought you had to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with all those spirit and tongues so you could take communion. I mean, no. You take communion because you have learned or somebody has taught you or you have recognized that God died for your sins and was buried again and rose again and you appreciate what he did so you remember him. And you know, when somebody has done something so marvelous for you, and you if you remember it, it makes you want to do something for him. Amen? Amen. So, so it, it, it doesn't have anything to do. We don't want children taking it if they're playing. Right. If, they, if they don't know what they're doing. If they, you know, but we don't, make, we don't have any law about you, you don't belong to this church or you're not baptized a certain way. Can't take communion, that, that's to me foolishness. But anyhow, that's what some people do. They have a, a way. If, if, you, if you don't belong to their church, you can't take communion when you come in. But it's not them. I mean, they didn't die for you. Hebrews 11, 3. Ecclesiastes 8, 9 through 12. Ecclesiastes 8, 9 through 12. Isaiah 8, 13. Isaiah 28, 
16. Gospel according to St. Luke 1, 37 through 45. Everybody there wanted to get them? Did you get them? All right. So that's who was Luke 1, 37 through 45. So I ask the question, are you a cheerleader or a drum, drum major? There's not a whole lot of, uh, there, there's not a, let's see, how should I say that? There's not a, there's, there's a difference in a cheerleader and a drum major. What would you say is the difference?
just said peace, peace to the child. And I said peace to the child. The testimony is the whole demeanor changed. There was no more tantrum, no more pain, nothing. Nothing. I didn't say say to the Lord, I didn't raise my voice. I just had like to say peace, peace, and kept walking. I didn't know really what happened after I kept walking, but that's what God told me to do. You know what I'm saying? So, my point is that you don't reach back and try to get Bishop Osborne, he's dead. You understand what I'm saying? But you do, if God leaves you in a better way to effect some, some doing the adversary, then you use the new what God has given. He says, I make things new. In other words, I, I don't do what the old school did. I have a better way of doing it. It's just like <clears throat> the Lord told me <clears throat> in our quest for getting people filled with the Spirit, he said, we used to have people, if they were going to, we wanted to pray, we wanted to pray with them, we'd say, okay, get out on your knees and loosen up your tie if you had one on and <laughs> take your coat off. And the very fact that you do it all this suggests that this is going to be a workout. <laughs> you understand? This is going to be a long process. But the Lord told me, and he taught me this before I ever came to Portland. He taught me by my own affliction. And I've told some of you this testimony before, but I have to keep saying things because just like I had to talk about communion, I found out somebody that's been with me for years didn't understand it. So I have to keep telling you this, this story. But I was afflicted and I was weak and I didn't have no hollow in me. What it took to hollow, I didn't have. You understand? So there was a young lady that was looking for the Holy Ghost. I used to work, I was a youth leader. And so I was praying the young people who were on the front bench and they were trying to get the Holy Ghost. And I was praying for one and praying, and I just go from one to the other praying for them. And uh, so there were other young people there that were praying with me. And I'll never forget this girl's name was Francis. And she had had some kind of heart problem, although she was very young. About the same age as I was, maybe 18, 17, 18, 20, it was. Maybe 19 or 20. But anyhow, she was very weak. She just been under the doctor's care. And so somebody was praying with her, and so they was praying, say, say hallelujah, hallelujah, say it louder, say it louder, say it louder, say it louder, come on, with all your heart, say it now. <laughs> and they was hollering, 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 hollering. And finally, she was just saying, hallelujah, 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 you know, just praising for her. And so the people that were praying with her, got disgusted and got up and they said she don't want no Holy Ghost. That's what they said. And so I immediately, because I was with somebody else, I immediately got down. I said, Francis, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I just said, Hallelujah. Praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just about to say the same voice I'm saying now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in no time that girl was speaking in tongues. Speaking to the what, I'm, what am I saying? Somebody tell me what I said. Because I don't think people get what I'm saying. What did I just say? What am I saying? What point did I make? It's not about a formula. It's not about a formula. It's not the power of God. And it doesn't take all that work. Because it is what? Because why does not take all that work? It's a promise, it's a gift, and it's what? It's already come, and what else? Come on, you got it. You know, that's it, that's it. It's not a gift. You, you can't give nobody the Holy Ghost. But how you understand what I'm saying? And, I'm, I, and I want, I want, I'm trying to make myself clear because I'm not saying that we cannot holler or get excited or praise God with all our heart or stomp or scream and clap our hands. I'm not saying that. Because, but we do that because the Holy Ghost is working. You know what I'm saying? You don't do it to get it to work. 
Because when our act, when the enemy is attacking someone, it's not how loud you holler. But it is the spirit of God that's going to subdue the adversary. People are afraid. And we get all excited. Sometimes, if a person is disturbing the service, now, I, as I say, I, 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 I didn't know what I was going to say, but anyhow, I told you I'd give you an example of when I did holler, and I remember uh, I was supposed to hear it, and so the devil was tormenting somebody uh -huh. back here, and uh, I got up. Well, 
trying to get the faith to get it done. And if it takes that, well, that's what you have to do. But, but as I say, the Lord taught me through my weakness. In my weakness, I'm strong. Because I have to lean on the Lord. Because I don't have all that threat to be hollering and going on. <laughs> I don't have all that strength. That's right. So the Lord taught me that it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. It, but he, he had to do it. Otherwise, I would have followed what I saw other people do. And that's what I think our people were doing. They followed what they saw people do. And, and I know this used to use a lot of energy and strength in doing that, but that, it, was, it wasn't necessary, but that's the way God let them do it because he was going to be determined it was going to be done. So, so he go, that, that was just, I mean, but that's not, but God is showing us all sorts of, and I'll give you an example of the, the devil and also his spirit comes not by you, but by him. And that's what we have to learn as, as things of God. So, are you going to be a drum major or Cheerleader. 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 <clears throat> Does that fit anybody? You gonna be a drum major or you gonna be a cheerleader? I am a drum major. You are a drum major, huh? All right. Yeah. I believe God's looking for some drum majors. That's what I'm saying. We have There's nothing wrong with a cheerleader. The cheerleader is keeping the thing going. But the drum major sets the tone. The drum major sets the tone and leads the parade. And I believe God's looking for some drum major. Today we had a perfect example. Um, I, my sister goes to Bible study on Wednesday downtown and was waiting for uh, my nephew to come. And so the Lord told me to sing. And we were in Pioneer Square. So I said, Deb, I want to go over there and sing. And then you let me know if I'm singing loud enough so you can hear me because I'm going to be in the middle of the Pioneer Square. So I sang in the middle of Pioneer Square and she said, and then um, I lifted my voice louder and then she was like, you know, and then, so then people were walking by and saying, wow, you know, thank you Lord for that song. Or I, no, she didn't say Lord. I thank you for that song or that song was beautiful. And then I sang like three songs until Andre got there. Then we left. And she said, Gee, that was really good. You know, we just walked off like, you know, it was supposed to happen every day. <laughs> but so she was she was basically the cheerleader while I was the drum major. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. All right. What we did or how we used to do it, it's right where you look at. You look at what God is doing. And the same thing that he did in Bible days, he does now. Amen. And he's doing it now. We don't have to be lost in a quagmire of wonderment trying to figure out what and when is God going to work like he had, had worked in the Bible days because he's already doing it. Right? He's already doing it. But some of us don't see it because we don't see it. You know what I mean? We see it, but we don't see it. We don't see what God is doing as was in, in the case of the Sunday. People didn't see it because I came out after everybody was gone. <laughs> and the child was still carrying on her in his stool. And when it came out, the Lord just blessed. And that was the end. So Abel was praying for Abel. He was in church the next day. 
flowers and trees everywhere. Folks had cut the trees down and, and the, the house was all run down. And I said, forget it. I probably won't be going back there no more. <laughs> you know, really. Because it's not, it's, it, it wasn't what, you know, the glory was gone. It was a beautiful place. People would come by and they, you know, they would just be enamored, you know, with how beautiful the place was. Because my father kept it, kept it, well, actually he wasn't like my husband was. He wasn't no gardener, but he paid somebody to keep it. And it was beautiful. And he had planted so many uh, uh, Christmas trees, probably Eli Christmas trees in his plant. And uh, it, it was just beautiful. And we 
we're going to be beggars and cheaters and stealers and all that kind of stuff. We're not revealing Christ. Amen. 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 If we go around and run the door, oh, Lord, oh, Jesus, oh, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you don't have to be doing all that. You ask him and then thank him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I know you heard my prayer and I'm waiting on you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for touching my soul. Thank you for bringing my children to faith in you. Thank you for supplying my needs. Thank you for whatever it is. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just thank you.
light. Let there be a firmament in the heaven. And a firmament came. Let the firmament be separated. Let the, the waters be separated. And the waters were separated. All he said was let there be. So if he's in there, you can speak in tongues. It's the same, same principle, right? You can't speak unless he's in there. So if you've invited him in and you have surrendered your life to Christ, he's there.
in the air and breathe it, right? Speaking in tongues is the breath of God. So, everybody in here is breathing, but is everybody in here fully healthy? Some of you got some aches and pains, right? Or some ailments. That's the point. That's my point. But you're still breathing. So when you speak in tongues, it's, that's the spirit of God. That's the breath of God coming out of you to let you know I'm still here. Or, I'm, yeah, I'm still here. I mean, but he said tongues are for, not for the believer, but for the unbeliever. So what does that mean? Oh, that's the For the unbeliever. But what does that mean? <laughs> I want to know what you're saying. I mean, it's fine. I mean, I, I enjoy hearing people speak because, you know, it makes you happy. But, I mean, I don't need to hear you speak to discern whether you're saved or not. That's my point. I don't need to hear you speak in tongues to know whether you're saved or not. I need to see your fruit. Amen. <laughs>
sanctify the Lord in your heart. And let him be your fear. Don't fear man, but fear God. Amen. 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 All right. He's a tried stroke. Thank you. 